a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. NASA The National Aeronautics and Space Administration is an independent agency of the executive branch of the United States federal government responsible for the civilian space program, as well as aeronautics and aerospace research. President Dwight D. Eisenhower established NASA in 1958, with a distinctly civilian orientation encouraging peaceful applications in space science. The National Aeronautics and Space Act was passed on July 29, 1958, disestablishing NASA's predecessor, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. The new agency became operational on October 1, 1958. Since that time, most U.S. space exploration efforts have been led by NASA, including the Apollo moon landing missions, the Skylab space station, and later the Space Shuttle. Currently, NASA is supporting the International Space Station and is overseeing the development of the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle, the Space Launch System and commercial crew vehicles. The agency is also responsible for the Launch Services Program which provides oversight of launch operations and countdown management for unmanned NASA launches. NASA science is focused on better understanding Earth through the Earth Observing System, advancing heliophysics through the efforts of the Science Mission Directorate's Heliophysics Research Program, exploring bodies throughout the Solar System with advanced robotic spacecraft missions such as New Horizons, and researching astrophysics topics such as the Big Bang, through the Great Observatories and associated programs. NASA shares data with various national and international organizations such as from the Greenhouse Gases Observing Satellite. Creation From 1946, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics had been experimenting with rocket planes such as the supersonic Bell X-1. In the early 1950s, there was challenge to launch an artificial satellite for the International Geophysical Year. An effort for this was the American project Vanguard. After the Soviet launch of the world's first artificial satellite on October 4, 1957, the attention of the United States turned toward its own fledgling space efforts. The U.S. Congress, alarmed by the perceived threat to national security and technological leadership, urged immediate and swift action. President Dwight D. Eisenhower and his advisers counseled more deliberate measures. On January 12, 1958, NACA organized a special committee on space technology, headed by Guy Fitzstever. On January 14, 1958, NACA director Hugh Dryden published a national research program for space technology, stating, while this new federal agency would conduct all non-military space activity, the Advanced Research Projects Agency was created in February 1958 to develop space technology for military application. On July 29, 1958, Eisenhower signed the National Aeronautics and Space Act, establishing NASA. When it began operations on October 1, 1958, NASA absorbed the 43-year-old NACA intact, its 8,000 employees, an annual budget of 100 million US dollars, three major research laboratories, and two small test facilities. A NASA seal was approved by President Eisenhower in 1959. Elements of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency and the United States Naval Research Laboratory were incorporated into NASA. A significant contributor to NASA's entry into the space race with the Soviet Union was the technology from the German rocket program led by Werner von Braun, who was now working for the Army Ballistic Missile Agency, which in turn incorporated the technology of American scientist Robert Goddard's earlier works. Earlier research efforts within the U.S. Air Force and many of ARPA's early space programs were also transferred to NASA. In December 1958, NASA gained control of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a contractor facility operated by the California Institute of Technology. Staff and Leadership The agency's leader, NASA's administrator, is nominated by the President of the United States subject to approval of the U.S. Senate, and reports to him or her and serves as senior space science advisor. Though space exploration is ostensibly nonpartisan, the appointee usually is associated with the president's political party, and a new administrator is usually chosen when the presidency changes parties. The only exceptions to this have been James C. Fletcher, 
appointed by Republican Richard Nixon, but stayed through May 1977 into the term of Democrat Jimmy Carter. Daniel Goldin, appointed by Republican George H. W. Bush and stayed through the administration of Democrat Bill Clinton. And Robert M. Lightfoot, junior associate administrator under Democrat Barack Obama kept on as acting administrator by Republican Donald Trump, though the agency is independent. The survival or discontinuation of projects can depend directly on the will of the president. The first administrator was Dr. T. Keith Glenn and appointed by Republican President Dwight D. Eisenhower. During his term he brought together the disparate projects in American space development research. The third administrator, James E. Webb, appointed by President John F. Kennedy, was a Democrat who first publicly served under President Harry S. Truman. In order to implement the Apollo program to achieve Kennedy's moon landing goal by the end of the 1960s, Webb directed major management restructuring and facility expansion, establishing the Houston Manned Spacecraft Center and the Florida Launch Operations Center. Capitalizing on Kennedy's legacy, President Lyndon Johnson kept continuity with the Apollo program by keeping Webb on when he succeeded Kennedy in November 1963. But Webb resigned in October 1968 before Apollo achieved its goal, and Republican President Richard M. Nixon replaced Webb with Republican Thomas O. Payne. James Fletcher was responsible for early planning of the Space Shuttle program during his first term as administrator under President Nixon. He was appointed for a second term as administrator from May 1986 through April 1989 by President Ronald Reagan to help the agency recover from the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. Former astronaut Charles Bolden served as NASA's 12th administrator from July 2009 to January 20, 2017. Administrator Bolden is one of three former astronauts who became NASA administrators, along with Richard H. Truly and Frederick D. Gregory. The agency's administration is located at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. and provides overall guidance and direction, except under exceptional circumstances. NASA civil service employees are required to be citizens of the United States. NASA Advisory Council In response to the Apollo 1 accident which killed three astronauts in 1967, Congress directed NASA to form an Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel to advise the NASA Administrator on safety issues and hazards in NASA's aerospace programs. In the aftermath of the Shuttle Columbia accident, Congress required that the ASAP submit an annual report to the NASA Administrator and to Congress. By 1971, NASA had also established the Space Program Advisory Council and the Research and Technology Advisory Council to provide the administrator with advisory committee support. In 1977, the latter two were combined to form the NASA Advisory Council. Space Flight Programs NASA has conducted many manned and unmanned spaceflight programs throughout its history. Unmanned programs launched the first American artificial satellites into Earth orbit for scientific and communications purposes, and sent scientific probes to explore the planets of the solar system, starting with Venus and Mars, and including grand tours of the outer planets. Manned programs sent the first Americans into low Earth orbit, won the space race with the Soviet Union, by landing 12 men on the moon from 1969 to 1972 in the Apollo program, developed a semi-reusable LEO space shuttle, and developed LEO space station capability by itself and with the cooperation of several other nations including post-Soviet Russia. Some missions include both manned and unmanned aspects such as the Galileo probe, which was deployed by astronauts in Earth orbit before being sent unmanned to Jupiter. Manned Programs The experimental rocket-powered aircraft programs started by NACA were extended by NASA as support for manned spaceflight. This was followed by a one-man space capsule program, and in turn by a two-man capsule program. Reacting to loss of national prestige and security fears caused by early leads in space exploration by the Soviet Union. In 1961 President John F. Kennedy proposed the ambitious goal of landing a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s and returning him safely to the Earth. This goal was met in 1969 by the Apollo program, and NASA planned even more ambitious activities leading to a manned mission to Mars. However, Reduction of the perceived threat and changing political priorities almost immediately caused the termination of most of these plans. 
NASA turned its attention to an Apollo-derived temporary space laboratory, and a semi-reusable Earth orbital shuttle. In the 1990s, funding was approved for NASA to develop a permanent Earth orbital space station in cooperation with the international community, which now included the former rival, post-Soviet Russia. To date, NASA has launched a total of 166 manned space missions on rockets, and 13 X-15 rocket flights above the USAF definition of spaceflight altitude, 80 km. X-15 rocket plane, 1959-1968 the X-15 was an NACA experimental rocket-powered hypersonic research aircraft, developed in conjunction with the U.S. Air Force and Navy. The design featured a slender fuselage with fairings along the side containing fuel and early computerized control systems. Requests for proposal were issued on December 30, 1954, for the airframe, and February 4, 1955, for the rocket engine. The airframe contract was awarded to North American Aviation in November 1955, and the XLR-30 engine contract was awarded to Reaction Motors in 1956, and three planes were built. The X-15 was drop-launched from the wing of one of two NASA Boeing B-52 Strato Fortresses, NB-52 tail number 52003, and NB-52B tail number 52008, release took place at an altitude of about 45,000 feet and a speed of about 805 km per hour. Twelve pilots were selected for the program from the Air Force, Navy, and NACA. A total of 199 flights were made between 1959 and 1968, resulting in the official world record for the highest speed ever reached by a manned-powered aircraft, and a maximum speed of Mach 6.72. 4,519 miles per hour The altitude record for X-15 was 354,200 feet. Eight of the pilots were awarded Air Force astronaut wings for flying above 80 kilometers, and two flights by Joseph A. Walker exceeded 100 kilometers. Qualifying as spaceflight according to the International Aeronautical Federation, the X-15 program employed mechanical techniques used in the later manned spaceflight programs, including reaction control system jets, for controlling the orientation of a spacecraft, space suits, and horizon definition for navigation. The re-entry and landing data collected were valuable to NASA for designing the space shuttle. Project Mercury, 1958-1963 Shortly after the space race began, an early objective was to get a person into Earth orbit as soon as possible. Therefore the simplest spacecraft that could be launched by existing rockets was favored. The U.S. Air Force's Man in Space Soonest program considered many manned spacecraft designs, ranging from rocket planes like the X-15, to small ballistic space capsules. By 1958, the space plane concepts were eliminated in favor of the ballistic capsule. When NASA was created that same year, the Air Force program was transferred to it and renamed Project Mercury. The first seven astronauts were selected among candidates from the Navy, Air Force and Marine test pilot programs. On May 5, 1961, astronaut Alan Shepard became the first American in space aboard Freedom 7, launched by a Redstone booster on a 15-minute ballistic flight. John Glenn became the first American to be launched into orbit by an Atlas launch vehicle on February 20, 1962 aboard Friendship 7. Glenn completed three orbits, after which three more orbital flights were made, culminating in L. Gordon Cooper's 22-orbit flight Faith 7, May 15, 16, 1963. The Soviet Union competed with its own single-pilot spacecraft, Vostok. They sent the first man in space, by launching cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin into a single Earth orbit aboard Vostok 1 in April 1961, one month before Shepard's flight. In August 1962, they achieved an almost four-day record flight with Andrian Nikolaev aboard Vostok 3, and also conducted a concurrent Vostok 4 mission carrying Pavel Popovich. Project Gemini, 1961-1966 Based on studies to grow the Mercury spacecraft capabilities to long-duration flights, developing space rendezvous techniques, and precision Earth landing, 
Project Gemini was started as a two-man program in 1962 to overcome the Soviet's lead and to support the Apollo man lunar landing program, adding extravehicular activity and rendezvous and docking to its objectives. The first manned Gemini flight, Gemini 3, was flown by Gus Grisham and John Young on March 23, 1965. Nine missions followed in 1965 and 1966, demonstrating an endurance mission of nearly 14 days, rendezvous, docking, and practical lever, and gathering medical data on the effects of weightlessness on humans. Under the direction of Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev, the USSR competed with Gemini by converting their Vostok spacecraft into a two- or three-man Voskhod. They succeeded in launching two-man flights before Gemini's first flight, achieving a three-cosmonaut flight in 1963 and the first EVA in 1964. After this, the program was cancelled, and Gemini caught up while spacecraft designer Sergei Korolov developed the Soyuz spacecraft. Their answer to Apollo. Apollo Program 1961 1972. The U.S. public's perception of the Soviet lead in the space race motivated President John F. Kennedy to ask the Congress on May 25, 1961, to commit the federal government to a program to land a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s, which effectively launched the Apollo program. Apollo was one of the most expensive American scientific programs ever. It cost more than $20 billion in 1960s dollars, or an estimated dollar in present-day U.S. dollars. It used the Saturn rockets as launch vehicles, which were far bigger than the rockets built. For previous projects, the spacecraft was also bigger. It had two main parts, the Combined Command and Service Module, and the Lunar Landing Module. The LM was to be left on the Moon, and only the Command Module containing the three astronauts would eventually return to Earth. The second manned mission, Apollo 8, brought astronauts for the first time in a flight around the Moon in December 1968. Shortly before, the Soviets had sent an unmanned spacecraft around the Moon. On the next two missions docking maneuvers that were needed for the moon landing were practiced and then finally the moon landing was made on the Apollo 11 mission in July 1969. The first person to stand on the moon was Neil Armstrong, who was followed by Buzz Aldrin, while Michael Collins orbited above. Five subsequent Apollo missions also landed astronauts on the moon, the last in December 1972. Throughout these six Apollo spaceflights, 12 men walked on the moon. These missions returned a wealth of scientific data and 381.7 kilograms of lunar samples. Topics covered by experiments performed included soil mechanics, meteoroids, seismology, heat flow, lunar ranging, magnetic fields, and solar wind. The moon landing marked the end of the space race. And as a gesture, Armstrong mentioned mankind when he stepped down on the moon. Apollo set major milestones in human spaceflight. It stands alone in sending manned missions beyond low Earth orbit, and landing humans on another celestial body. Apollo 8 was the first manned spacecraft to orbit another celestial body, while Apollo 17 marked the last moonwalk in the last manned mission beyond low Earth orbit to date. The program spurred advances in many areas of technology peripheral to rocketry and manned spaceflight, including avionics, telecommunications, and computers. Apollo sparked interest in many fields of engineering and left many physical facilities and machines developed for the program as landmarks. Many objects and artifacts from the program are on display at various locations throughout the world, notably at the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museums. Skylab 1965-1979 Skylab was the United States' first and only independently built space station. Conceived in 1965 as a workshop to be constructed in space, from a spent Saturn nib upper stage, the 169,950 pounds station was constructed on Earth and launched on May 14, 1973. Atop the first two stages of a Saturn V, into a 235 nautical miles orbit inclined at 50 degrees to the equator damaged during launch by the loss of its thermal protection and one electricity generating solar panel, it was repaired to functionality by its first crew. It was occupied for a total of 171 days by three successive crews in 1973 and 1974. It included a laboratory for studying the effects of microgravity, 
and a solar observatory. NASA planned to have a space shuttle dock with it, and elevate Skylab to a higher safe altitude. But the shuttle was not ready for flight before Skylab's re-entry on July 11, 1979. To save cost, NASA used one of the Saturn V rockets originally earmarked for a cancelled Apollo mission to launch the Skylab. Apollo spacecraft were used for transporting astronauts to and from the station. Three three-man crews stayed aboard the station for periods of 28, 59, and 84 days. Skylab's habitable volume was 11,290 FT3, which was 30.7 times bigger than that of the Apollo command module. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?